Hi, I'm Jim Wald. I'm the plant breeder at Chicago Botanic Garden, but today you're going to see my breeding program in my backyard in Libertyville, Illinois. This is the show that you don't have to be a professional at a botanic garden or a nursery to do your own plant breeding. I am a liliaholic. I love lilies. I grow them. I breed them uh, literally by the thousands. We're standing in front of some trumpet lilies that have come into bloom the last few days, and these are lilies that I'm breeding for their hardiness, for their fragrance, for their different colors. Uh, this is a very typical trumpet flower, shaped literally like a trumpet uh, with the recurved petal tips. Wonderful strong fragrance in the evening uh, to other trumpets like this one over here with what they call pico tea or the pink or violet edges along the petals. What I'd like to show you is how to cross pollinate lilies. It's actually a very simple process. Uh, yesterday I came out when this flower was just starting to open, uh, say like either of those tomorrow, and I would remove all the anthers from it. And so here's a flower that's open, and you can see the anthers. Uh, and what I'm trying to do there is prevent the flower from self-pollinating. And then the other flower that I'd like to use as a parent, let's for instance talk about this one over here. I will pull the anther off of it. Uh, I would caution you that lily pollen stains rather dramatically if you get it all over your clothes, which of course I do. And it's just a matter of daubing pollen all over the stigma like that. How do you know when it's the right time to do it? If the stigma is real wet and viscous, looks like it has a, a coating of honey on it, that's just the right time to pollinate it. Uh, the pollen will stick to that very nicely. And I just happen to have behind my ear as a fashion accessory this pencil with a piece of aluminum foil that I just simply put over the end of the pencil to make like a little cup. And that will go over the stigma. And then I'll kind of close it down like that. And that'll keep anybody from coming along pollinating that flower after me, like hummingbirds and bees and anything else. And then any cross that I make, uh, I go ahead and label it. I give an accession number and write down the other plant that I'm crossing onto that lily. And that's all it takes. We're now lily breeders. Uh, this seed, uh, if that cross takes, the seed will ripen throughout the rest of the summer. September, October, I can collect the seed, germinate it over the winter under lights in the basement, and in about three years' time, have lilies blooming again. The lilies you're looking at in this bed are anywhere from, oh, I'd say five to ten years old. So they've really hit their uh, stride at this point. Uh, here are the two groups of lilies that I recommend to grow in your gardens in northern Illinois. The trumpets that I'm surrounded by, grown for their uh, huge stature and wonderfully fragrant flowers at night. Typically these bloom in, in uh, uh, late June into early August. And then the other group of lilies that I would recommend are the Asiatic lilies that I'm surrounded by. Uh, especially commercial cultivars like this one, Morden Butterfly. These will give you dramatic color in late May, June, into early July. They do not have the fragrance of the trumpet lilies, but they tend to be quite hardy and frost tolerant and come in a variety of colors and flower shapes as well.